Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Sachin Madhur and I am a technical marketing engineer with Juniper Networks. In this video, we will demonstrate how Juniper Networks products seamlessly integrate with the VMware ecosystem. We begin by showing how the QFX 5100 integrates with NSXV to provide the hardware VTAP functionality for bridged VXLANs. Next, we see how Network Director which is Juniper's network management platform, integrates with VMware's NSX and vCenter environment to provide a single pane of glass interface for looking at your physical and your virtual infrastructure. Then we will show how Juniper Network's management pack for vRealize operation makes it easy for the cloud administrator to manage their entire data center. And finally, we will show how Juniper Network's content pack integrates with the rich log analytic features of vRealize log inside, further helping the cloud administrators monitor and analyze security logs. In this section, we will show how to configure Juniper's QFX 5100 switch as a VXLAN L2 gateway for VMware NSXV to enable communication between the virtual workloads and the physical workloads. NSXV is VMware's network virtualization product. The NSX controller as shown in the diagram, maintains information about the VMs, hosts, logical switches, and VXLANs, and provides a central control plane for all logical switches within the network. As we know, VXLAN is an overlay technology that tunnels L2 packets over a L3 network. VXLAN tunnels are used by the vSwitches to enable communication between VMs on different ESXi hosts. The tunnel endpoints are called VTEPs, and are responsible for the encapsulation and decapsulation of the L2 packets in and out of the tunnel. The VTAP functionality on the ESXi host is enabled in software by installing the VM kernel module, and thus it constitutes a software VTAP. When the VTAP functionality is performed by an external device like the QFX 5100, then this device is referred to as a hardware VTAP. In a typical data center, not all workloads are virtualized. There also exists numerous physical servers or bare metal servers which do not contain a vSwitch that can perform the VTAP functionality. In these cases, if the virtualized workloads want to communicate with the non-virtualized workloads, we can use a device like QFX 5100 to provide the hardware VTAP functionality. In order to implement the control plane functionality, the hardware VTAP talks to the NSX controller using OVSTB protocol to exchange the control plane information. It receives the remote MACs from the NSX controller and also sends its locally learned MACs to the controller which in turn sends it out to the other VTEPs in the network. Here is the physical topology for the demo. The underlay consists of an IP class network with the QFX 5100s operating as leaf nodes. VM1 resides on an ESXi host that connects to the QFX 5100-1 and a bare metal server connects to the QFX 5100-2. QFX 5100-2 is acting as a hardware VTEP to enable communication between the VM1 and the BMS2. Both the devices are part of the same VNI 5000. The QFX 5100-2 also has a connection to the NSX controller. Now we log into the QFX 5100-2 switch. What we show in the next steps is the basic minimum configuration required to set up the L2 gateway functionality on the 5100. We configure the switch options and specify the loopback interface as the VTAP interface. And under the protocol OVSTB configuration, we specify the interface that will be facing the bare metal server and also the controller IP address. What we see next is the interface that faces the bare metal server has no configuration under it. This will be auto provisioned by the controller. As we see, we don't have any logical switches added yet to the switch and also no MAC addresses learned through the OVSTB protocol. Under the OVSTB controller, we saw that we added one IP address, but what we'll see is it will actually show all the controllers that belong to the controller cluster. We now log into the VM and see the IP address that's been assigned to the interface. It's 2020-2100. And on the bare metal server, 
the IP address that is assigned is 2020.20.104. Now the tunnels are not established yet. So what we'll do is we'll try a ping from 2020.20.100 to 2020.20.104. And as expected, this fails because no tunnels have been established yet. Next, we'll add the QFX5100 to the NSX as the hardware device. The link shown here shows the exact steps to generate the certificate and how to transfer that certificate to the switch. We now log in to the NSX and we will add the hardware device here. In order to add the hardware device, we first go under service definitions. And then we click on the hardware devices tab. Here we click on the add sign. In order to add the hardware device, we would need to specify the name of the device and the certificate that we previously generated on the switch. The certificate required is the vtep-cert.pem, which is found under the wardb certs folder. We copy the certificate as shown and paste it in the certificate section of the NSX. What we see here is the hardware device is not attached to any logical switch. So we go under the logical switch section and here we will add the ports on the switch that face the bare metal server to the logical switch. For the purpose of our demo, the VNI that we are interested in is VNI 5000. So we click that logical switch and attach hardware ports. Here we select the hardware device that is the QFX 5100-1 and then we click on the add sign and specify the port that faces the bare metal server. Now we go under service definition and we check that the logical switch has been added to the hardware device. Now we go back to the switch and we check the OVSTB logical switch command and we see that the logical switch with VNI 5000 has been added. And now we see that in the interface that faces the bare metal server, configuration has been automatically provisioned through the NSX. Under the VLAN section, we'll see that the VLAN has been created with the logical switch name. Now we'll go ahead and check the show OVSTV MAC command. This command did not return any output when the tunnels were not added. And now we can see that we see a bunch of MAC addresses here. Now we go back to the VM and try to ping 2020-2104 and it works. This proves that the VXLAN tunnel has been successfully established and we are able to establish communication between the bare metal server and the VM. In the next section, we will look at Juniper Network Director's integration with VMware's vCenter and NSX environments. Network Director unifies physical and virtual networks, providing a comprehensive view of the complete end-to-end -end virtual to physical network infrastructure. It integrates with VMware's vCenter, delivering a combined solution that benefits from both vendors' innovation and from Juniper's orchestration solution to discover, visualize connectivity between virtual and physical networks, orchestrate and monitor VMware vSphere environments. Network Director also integrates with cloud infrastructure controlled by VMware's NSX SDN controller environments. Through this integration, Network Director provides complete and correlated visibility between virtualized overlay and physical networks, as well as virtual machines, VXLAN, and virtual tunnel endpoints. Let's take a quick look at this integration in a demo. We are currently logged into our Network Director. We go into the data center view. We have a data center created consisting of physical switches, hosts, VMs, and are also running VXLAN. Here we see a connectivity map of our devices in the data center. By rolling over the links, we can easily see the node and the interface names for the connected devices. We select the VM checkbox to display all the VMs in the map. We can also further highlight the overlay networks to see what VMs are part of the selected VXLAN and also see the VTEPs in the network. We can easily list all the overlay networks present in the data center and also what VMs belong to each of these networks. 
As you can see, there are also options to list all the VMs, hypervisor servers, and the virtual switches in the data center. Network Director also provides monitoring of the data center. As shown here, you can quickly see the inventory of your devices, active alerts, and bandwidth utilizations by host and by VMs. By going to the vMotion History tab, we can take a look at the log of the vMotions carried out in the data center. We can go to any host in the network and also view the internal connectivity between the vNICs, virtual switches, and the uplink interfaces in a visual format. Now, as you can see from this demo, Network Director seamlessly integrates with your vCenter and NSX environments and provides visibility into the physical and the virtual infrastructure from a single pane of glass. In this section, we will talk about Juniper Network's integration with the VMware vRealize operation. VMware's vRealize operation is part of VMware's vRealize suite. It provides analytics, monitoring, and capacity planning features. It provides single pane of glass management for cloud admins to monitor their cloud infrastructure that consists of compute, storage, and network components. Juniper has partnered with VMware to develop the Juniper Networks Management Pack for VROPS. Once it is installed, the plugin pulls the contextual network information and presents it in the five new Juniper dashboards that you can see on the VROPS home screen. It also provides high-level and drill-down views of health, risk, and efficiency status for all the data centers, network fabrics, hypervisors, and VMs. Here is what you see on your VROPS homepage once the Juniper Networks Management Pack is installed. It enables five new dashboards. In the Infrastructure Overview dashboard, we see all our data centers, network fabrics, hosts, and VMs. We'll click on one of the data centers and it will automatically gray out the components that do not belong to this data center. On the right hand side, we can see a bunch of alerts and on the bottom right pane, shows the fabrics that belong to this selected data center. We are currently in the health view. We can now toggle to the risk view by selecting the corresponding badge on the left hand side top corner. We can select the particular object and get the object specific details as shown. The network fabric object that we see is coming from the Juniper's network director and it represents a network that is connected as a queue fabric, a virtual chassis, virtual chassis fabric, a IP clause, or a Juno's Fusion network. Now we will double click on one of the objects and see the overall summary of the object's health, risk, and efficiency status. We can further click the risk status to get more drill down details. What we see here is from the object that we have selected, we are getting a port high utilization alert at a per port level. If we click on the fabric monitoring dashboard, we would see a fabric centric overview providing the historic CPU and memory utilization. It also provides future level predictions based on the VROPS forecasting algorithm. In this demo, we just gave you a glimpse of Juniper Network's integration with VROPS. And as you can see, there is plenty more to explore and see how Juniper Networks extends the functionality of VROPS. In the next section, we will talk about Juniper Networks integration with VMware's vRealize Login Site. VMware vRealize Login Site provides a scalable log aggregation and indexing with near real-time search and analytics capabilities. Juniper Networks Content Pack for vRealize Login Site extends this capability to provide a rich set of built-in dashboards, predefined extracted fields, and pre-built queries and alerts, providing monitoring and analysis of security logs. It also supports custom dashboards for integrating the rich log analytics features of vRealize Log Insight with SRX and VSRX security logging capabilities, further helping the cloud administrators monitor and analyze security logs. Juniper's Log Insight Content Pack includes built-in dashboards for monitoring attack flows, flow sessions, bandwidth utilization, and packet drops. 
This could help the cloud administrators monitor key flow level and application level behaviors as well as detect potential threats, attacks, spam events in the network. The general dashboard includes top flow and events, denied flows, and blocked and permitted website widgets along with other information. The attack flow dashboard shows attacks by service, application, and protocol types. The flow session dashboard reports sessions created, closed by source and destination IP addresses and ports. The bandwidth dashboard shows bandwidth utilization by client and server, both in the form of bytes as well as number of packets segregated by service types. For interactive log analysis, Juniper's log insight content pack includes predefined extracted fields that provides cloud administrator with a detailed view of security logs. Users can drill down into each dashboard to view additional log and field contents. Now we log in to the Virilize login site. We have the Juniper content pack already installed and we see the built-in dashboards that we discussed earlier. What we see on the screen right now is the general dashboard. Next, we will go to the interactive analysis tab where we will see the logs that are being generated by the Juniper VSRX device and are being received as events on this tab. Next, we will see how to create a custom dashboard to see only specific events which might be interesting. For example, here we will create a filter which will show all drop packets coming in from source IP 10.1.1.1 and going to destination IP 20.1.1.1. In order to create the filter, we select the add filter and then specify Juniper SRX action name field and specify it to match to drop. Then we select the Juniper SRX destination IP field and specify it to match to 20.1.1.1. And similarly, we select Juniper SRX source IP field and specify that to match to 10.1.1.1. Once we create this filter, we will go ahead and add that query to the dashboard. Here we will go ahead and specify the name that will represent this query on the dashboard and then we select the dashboard where this query needs to be added. It can either be an existing dashboard or we can create a new dashboard as shown. Once we add the dashboard, we will see a status indicating the dashboard has been added and now we can go to the dashboard tab again and check for this particular dashboard. Now this will be available under the My Dashboard section which we can toggle to as shown here. Now we go ahead and click the dashboard and we can see the representation as shown. Now to further drill down into the events, we can go ahead and open it in the interactive analysis view. Once we are in this view, we can clearly see the exact syslog messages that led to the generation of these events and the exact timestamps when these messages were received. Now based on this query we can also create alerts so that the administrator can be notified of the events as they happen. To do that we go ahead and click on the create alert from query and we specify the email address where the alert needs to be sent. So to summarize the Juniper Network's log insight content packs offers both the built-in dashboards as well as the capability to create custom dashboards, enabling the cloud administrators to view and analyze logs, monitor, debug, and perform threat analysis for applications in their data center using a single interface. Now, in order to get the Juniper's content pack for VMware VRealize login site, uh, it can be downloaded from the VMware VRealize login site marketplace. This brings us to the end of this demo. Thank you for watching.